for the first time since the 2008 Olympics this summer, the United States will have an artistic swim team competing. While we will be excited to watch them as part of the 2024 games on NBC4, here in Columbus, we are already looking, of course, toward the future as well. Our Whitney Harding joins us now with the story. It may surprise some people to learn that Central Ohio has an incredible synchronized swimming legacy, right? That's right. I mean, it's a sport that just screams California, Texas, warm weather climates year round. But get this, the most successful team at Ohio State is the synchronized swim team. 34 national titles. Yes, 3-4, 34. And while some of those swimmers do come from warm climate states, there is a deep-rooted tradition here in Columbus as well, starting with the Coralinas, a synchro club that began in 1955. Nine-year-old Cami Engel has grown up around the pool. She was born in Florida, and we had to obviously get her in swimming lessons real quickly. But Cami quickly learned that straight lines isn't her style. It was just a bunch of laps, and I didn't like it, so then I didn't. I stopped doing it. Believe it or not, it took Cami moving away from the coast to Columbus for her to find her swimming style synchronized swimming. It was really a way for her to combine her favorite things of gymnastics, swimming, dance. If they're loving swimming but bored to tears just doing laps, this gives them sport. There's competition, there's creativity. One of the most challenging aspects of synchronized swimming is communicating to the athletes that what makes a team stand out is for everyone to blend in. And they all need to learn to work and move together harmoniously. We're teaching technique. We're teaching them how to train, how to, you know, mentally overcome the challenges of practice and of a season and of disappointment and of success. This coming weekend, the Ohio Coralinas will look to take the final step towards success this season. The regional championships are here in Columbus, Ohio, with the top teams and individuals qualifying for the Junior Olympic National Championships. It's very competitive to get there. You've got to place in the top three for certain events and in the top two for other events in your entire region so that's multiple states all competing together everything you've done is to go there this will be Cami's first shot at qualifying for nationals but definitely not her last the sport has become a part of her it's like experiencing the music underwater she feels it it feels good if we get it right the music is a cool aspect, actually. There's technology yeah. to it because yeah. I know I learned this in school, but kind of like cursive, it's been a few years since I've had to use this information, right. so the it's a bit sloppy. But um, the you have to have a transmitter because mm. there's a different frequency if the music plays in water, water. and yeah. out of water. Right. Yeah. And they're going back and forth. So to stay on beat, you have to have the technology to make sure that the sound in the water matches out of the water. There's so it's much really that cool. goes into it. Also want to give a shout out to the Lakes Mermaids who are also competing in the regionals this weekend. Oh, so cool. Love to see it. And maybe future Olympians there. Okay. Whitney, thank you.